Hello YouTubers, Vince Romano 26 here, and this is my first ever facial shot. I got nominated by Thelma Thrift to do the 2015 Reseller Yearly Review. Categories involved in this are my best pickup, biggest sourcing fail, best investment in the, your business this year other than stock, best advice you have received from the community this year, funniest slash strangest experience at boot fair, thrift shops, and the like, Boot Fair, Thrift Store, Flea Market, Bug of the Year, What Bugged You, Best Feedback of the Year, Product That Has Surprised You This Year, Best Seller This Quarter For, and My Aim for 2016. So to start off with my best pickup, I would have to say it was the Rosetta Stone software that I picked up for like, I think it was like $12, and I sold them for over 400 That was awesome considering... I didn't think I could sell the Rosetta Stone on eBay because everyone was like, uh, you can't sell the Rosetta Stone on eBay because they're going to take it off. And I just thought, I don't care what you say. I am going to sell it anyway. And while I did have to refund someone because the software had already been used on three different computers, I still profited a huge amount and I made my money back way. It was awesome. Cha-ching! So that was great. Now on to my biggest sourcing fail. I would probably have to say that that was my... Oh man, what was that? I think the worst thing that I had an issue with happened to be the Anchor Hawking Fire King Jadeite plates that I literally just sold about a few weeks ago. I bought them for $10 uh, for the both of them, so $5 each. I listed them for 5 and thought that I could get maybe $20, $25 for them. Because um, if any of you have watched my haul videos um, in the past, I bought a set of three Anchor Hawking Fire King Jadeite, or yeah, I think it's Jadeite, Jadeite um, tea sets, like a creamer, a sugar holder, and like a, I don't remember what the other one was, but anyway, I bought the set for $5 and I sold it for $62, and it was perfect. I mean, I made a huge profit off of that. So I thought, okay, this other Jadeite, I should be able to make some money on. I guess that also ties into the Anchor Hawking Fire King um, dishware in general. I used to buy that stuff like crazy. I would buy the mugs and I would buy the casserole dishes and you know anything that was made Anchor Hawking Fire King I would pretty much buy just to sell it. But shipping for that stuff is just so expensive so I just said forget it I'm done I put my hands up. So my best investment in your business year this year other than stock in terms of the, oh man, what can I say for that? Best thing that I've sold so far, it would probably have to be, oh man, what did I take a chance on? I, I mean, I've had so many good things sell for good numbers. Um, let's see. Best investment in my business this year other than stock. Hmm. Oh, okay. Here's what I can say. My best investment in my business this year. I would probably have to say that um, putting in $8 for a Pottery Barn backgammon set that was brand new in terms of like the chips being sealed in the package and everything. That was great. I bought that for eight bucks. I sold it for forty four ninety nine on eBay. It says other than stock, so maybe that wasn't something that they were looking for. But yeah, that was something that I thought was great because I invested eight dollars in something that I probably would never have invested eight dollars in, and I profited thirty some dollars, like thirty seven bucks. So, and the best advice that I've received from my reseller community is just to be on the lookout for pretty much anything you think that might be worth money. Don't be picky about whatever you're picking up, or don't be picky in terms of one category. Like, don't go for just vintage Halloween or vintage Christmas or, you know, vintage toys. Go for the newer stuff. I mean, if you guys know that my channel is mostly dedicated to vintage, but I also look for newer stuff, too. I mean, like, stuff that I think, you know, has name brands. Like, I look for Vera Bradley purses because I know women go gaga for those, especially because when they were first produced 
some of those patterns were wicked expensive. Like, go to Hallmark or go to, I don't know, Macy's or some other place that sells that stuff, and it's not cheap. So to be able to get an accessory for, I don't know, 4 or $5 off eBay, and I pay $0.50 cents for it, smack dab. And it's just be open-minded with what you're finding. I mean, don't, don't limit yourself. This world is full of great things to resell. Um, my only downfall with that is I'm not into the whole book thing. I mean, I just don't know enough about books, and I'm not really into the whole Amazon thing, because that's more for modern stuff. So I'm not into that. Okay, the okay funniest slash strangest experience at a thrift store or any flea market. Um, I would say one of the strangest things that's ever happened to me in terms of... Are my nostrils flaring? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't help but laugh at that. Uh, strangest thing I think that's ever happened to me in terms of the uh, community is the fact that I think it's just in general when someone asks me if I'm a reseller. I find that kind of strange just because, you know, I am a reseller. So when someone asks me, it's kind of like, uh, no, uh, you might want to ask the next guy behind you. But... To me, that's just strange because, you know, you go to a flea market to sell and when you see someone with a load of stuff, you kind of think, oh, they're stocking inventory for their antique booth, for eBay, for Etsy, you know, all those other sources of income. So, yeah, that's that's my funniest slash strangest experience at a boot fair or thrift shop, sorry, or flea market. So a thrift store or flea market bug of the year, something that just bugged the hell out of me. I would probably have to say the one thing that does, it doesn't bother me, but it's just something that is kind of, I don't know, just something that just kind of gets under my skin a little bit, is when I set either my bag down or I'm setting down, I used to carry around a black cart with all my stuff in it because I used to buy so much crap, you have no idea. So I used to, you know, set it down somewhere and someone would just start digging through it. And I'm like, dude, do you see it's a bag? Uh, that's someone else's. And I would... I'm not rude, and I try not to be. I'm just like, oh, that's my stuff, so, you know, don't touch it. And I don't say don't touch it. I just say, that's my stuff. I already paid for that. And they're just like, sorry. And it wasn't like I was rude to them, so it's not like it was a snobby, like, don't touch that. That's mine. Oops, sorry. Pop up. Close. Close. Okay. So, yeah, that's one thing that kind of really irritates me. Or when people are just in front of you and they don't even notice that you're there, that's that's at estate sales all the time. Like, you say, excuse me, just to be polite. And then there comes a time where you have to yeah, say, excuse me, because nobody's moving their butt. Especially when it's that full, say, it like a, a, an estate sale that's full to the brim with stuff and you just want to get everywhere just to get all the good stuff so you can make the most money. Or even keep it for, for yourself, just like I do sometimes. So, yeah, that's... That's probably one of the things that just bugs me the most. My best feedback of the year, I don't know if it was, I think it was over the summer, yeah. I bought this um, 50s pinup calendar and it was nude. And of course, that's just one thing that I absolutely love. And of course, my mother knows or doesn't know that I have it, so shh, let's keep that a secret. So she, so I bought these two calendars. I think I paid maybe, oh God, was like two fifty a piece for them because this lady had three for ten or two for five, something like that at her uh, booth. So I picked them up, and I thought, okay, you know what? I'll just sell one of them and make my money back. I paid eighteen dollars for it. It went overseas to France, and the guy just told me that I was impeccable. And you know what? That's something that makes me feel so good. It's just to know that the customers that I'm helping out are satisfied with the service that I've given them and the, you know, the descriptions that I give. I mean, I try to be as descriptive as possible. If something's got a scratch, I mention it. If there's something missing from something, I let them know. Products that have surprised me this year. Oh, man. There's so many things that have surprised me. I would definitely have to say that something that really surprised me this year is the Coke trays that I just sold uh, at the beginning of my listing for the uh, Christmas season. I bought those trays, oh man, I bought them like last year, 
I sold four of the common ones, the 1950 girl with the wind in her hair tray, I sold the menu girl tray, I sold the uh, picnic basket one from 1958, and I sold the 1961 pansy garden tray. I only got $10 for them. I was expecting maybe to get 20 or 25 I should have just listed them for $25, but it just surprised me because typically if I brought those to a flea market, I could sell them, but I mean, nobody was buying them. I was asking 20 a piece, but that's just because of the collectability of them. So that was a little disappointing on my part, especially for Coke stuff. But I knew that those four trays were the most common of them all. So in a way, it surprised me. And in a way, it didn't just because it kind of it was like, you know, people are always looking for these trays. And even though it was on eBay, but, you know, win some, lose some. That's how it is in this business. Best seller this quarter for? Um... Hmm. My best seller. Oh, man. I've had a lot of stuff sell. Oh, man. What can I say this best seller this quarter for? What have I sold that's for a lot of money so far? I'm gonna... Let me look at my... Let me look at my eBay sales real quick. Look and see what I've sold so far. That way I can. Let's see. See if you guys have never seen my phone case. I got a Galaxy S4 and it's in a um, really nice navy blue case and it's got a hard green uh, shell. All right, so my best sold item this so far. Ah, here's something that I bought for a dollar at that charity shop that's right next to my college campus. I bought a uh, Beauty and the Beast diamond. It was a Blu-ray DVD. It was the diamond edition that came with three discs. I paid a dollar for it. I checked all the discs. They were clean as can be, like they had never been watched, and I sold it for $31. And that was just a few weeks ago. So that was my best seller so far. Next to the uh, Pottery Barn Baggammon set. That was brand new. And my goal for 2016 in terms of this reselling business that I do is to not buy so much stuff and be more selective. Now, I'm not saying I'm just going to stick to one item that I know of. I mean, I'm going to be picking up a lot more stuff, but I'm not going to be buying so much stuff like, you know, bins of stuff. I'm not going to have bins of stuff because we just cleaned out all of my eBay inventory and a lot of it was more flea market worthy. So I'm going to just be really careful with how much I'm spending and how much I, you know, take chances on things. I mean, it's always good to take chances on your merchandise, but you want to be careful with how much you're buying because some of the stuff that you have could just be plain junk. So definitely when you get a chance, look up certain things on your phone. I mean, don't do it right in front of the person that's selling the stuff. I mean, to me, that's just rude, and I don't like to do that, especially, I know my dad's always telling me, you know, they don't care. They're here to sell it, too, but it, it's just something in me that doesn't like to do it because, you know, I, I just, maybe it's just a, I don't know what it is. But I definitely want to give a shout out to my parents for this because they've been so supportive of me, you know, making these videos. I mean, they think it's awesome that I finally found a niche. Like, I'm not saying I didn't have, like, I, well, I guess maybe I'll just dive into a little bit of my personal life here. When I was in school, like, once I got to high school, I didn't really have a core group of friends to hang out with. I had friends all over the place. I had friends in the popular groups. I had friends in the nerds. I had friends in the middle. Friends all over the place. So I didn't really have a set group of people to really hang out with. And, you know, I didn't really get out much. I still don't get out much either. But, you know, once I get a vehicle and, you know, I can go out and just start meeting people. And, you know, maybe I'll, I'll start dating. Maybe I'll find somebody. But, yeah, I mean, doing this is just fun because you meet so many great people. I mean, I've learned so much from people who do haul videos. I don't even know how I got started watching YouTube uh, thrift hauls and flea market hauls and things like that. But I just did, and I was like, hey, I should do this. I mean, I I like vintage. I love anything that dates to pre-1980. And I love 
the era that my grandparents lived through. I'm, I'm a 50s freak. I love the 1950s. And to me, it's just something fun to do. And I know that there are a lot of people, like the Bonafide Hustler. We've got Steve with Rake and Profit. Um, I don't know if Thrift School, Jesse with Thrift School or uh, Logan with a Thrift Hunter. I don't know if they do this just as um, full-time. To me, this is just a hobby. I mean, I've turned it into something way more than what I expected it to be. But I definitely encourage all of you who are um, picking and reselling to definitely start a YouTube channel. It's easy. Pick what you like to show. Do your eBay sales reports. Do your Etsy sales reports. Do your Amazon FBA sales reports. It's so much fun. You meet so many great people. And it's just something that I enjoy. I've been doing this my whole life. I mean, I've been flea marketing since I was in diapers. I've been antiquing since I was in diapers. The house that I'm currently in, who, which is my grandmother's house, who uh, you all know passed away four years ago. When I was younger, she had a bunch of advertising. She had old dolls. She had virtually everything. And part of that is just how she grew up. You know, you get have it once, you may not have it again. That was just that whole depression thinking. She was born right around the years, the last of the years of the depression. She was born in 38. So, yeah, that was my 2015 reseller yearly review. My nominees for this uh, yearly review, I would love for Karen Leobo, a.k.a. Digging with Dirty Girl, and Angie Martin with Treasured Vintage to do the 2015 reseller yearly review. So, yeah, that's all I got for you today. If you are not following me already on Periscope, you can find me at Vince Romano. And it's just the Jane Mansfield icon that I have for YouTube. I'm considering changing it. I don't know. I want to get some good pictures of myself because I clearly I cannot take pictures. So I'll show you guys what that looks like if you haven't seen it already. All right, let's see. Let me just go onto Google and I'll find the picture. So just look for this, I don't know how well y'all will be able to see that. Just look for this picture of her. I mean, it's on my YouTube channel. You guys will find it. And be sure to check me out on eBay at Skulking1995. My Etsy shop is skulkingstreasures.etsy.com. I haven't got a lot of inventory in Etsy yet because I've got so much more that I'm trying to list on eBay. And Etsy, that stuff can sit for however long it wants to. I just want it on there, and that way, whenever it sells, I can just get rid of it. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate all of your subscriptions, and I want to thank everyone on here who has been supporting me, giving me encouragement, leaving these amazing comments, and just helping me brighten my day, especially when my hard-ass days at my retail job just are getting the best of me. So again, thank you all again so much for your subscriptions. I greatly appreciate it, and it's just so much fun to to hear all the positive feedback and just it helps me do what I do so again check me out at Vince Romano 26 if you haven't already done so and make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of my reseller yearly review and thank you for watching bye